October country, that country where it is always turning late in the year, that country where the hills are fog and the rivers are mist, where noons go quickly, dusks and twilights linger, and midnights stay, that country composed in the main of cellars, subcellars, coal bins, closets, attics, and pantries faced away from the sun, that country whose people are autumn people, thinking only autumn thoughts, whose people passing at night on the empty walks sound like rain. The Small Assassin Just when the idea occurred to her that she was being murdered, she could not tell. There had been little subtle signs, like suspicions for the past month, things as deep as sea tides in her, like looking at a perfectly calm stretch of tropic water, wanting to bathe in it, and finding, just as the tide takes your body, that monsters dwell just under the surface, things unseen, bloated, many-armed, sharp-finned, malignant, and inescapable. A room faced around her, a room floated around her, in an, effu in an effluvian of hysteria. Sharp instruments hovered, and there were voices and people in sterile white masks. My name, she thought, what is it? Alice Liber. It came to her. David, Alice Lieber, it came to her, David Lieber's wife, but it gave her no comfort. She was alone with these silent, whispering white people, and there was great pain and nausea and death fear in her. I am being murdered before their eyes. These doctors, these nurses, don't realize what hidden thing has happened to me. David doesn't know. Nobody knows except me and the killer, the little murderer, the small assassin. I am dying, and I can't tell them now. They'd laugh and call me one in delirium. They'll see the murderer and hold him and never think him responsible for my death. But here I am, in front of God and man, dying. No one to believe my story, everyone to doubt me. Comfort me with lies, bury me in ignorance, mourn me and salvage my despair. Where is David, she wondered, in the waiting room, smoking one cigarette after another, listening to the long tickings of the very slow clock? Sweat exploded from all of her body at once, and with it an agonizing cry. Now, 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 try and kill me, she screamed. Try it, but I won't die, I won't. There was a hollowness, a vacuum. Suddenly the pain fell away. Exhaustion and dusk came around. It was over. Oh, God. She plummeted down and struck a black nothingness, which gave way to nothingness and nothingness and another, and still another. Footsteps, gentle approaching footsteps. Far away a voice said, She's asleep, don't disturb her. An odor of tweeds, a pipe, a certain shaving lotion. David was standing over her, and beyond him the immaculate smell of Dr. Jeffers. She did not open her eyes. I'm awake, she said quietly. It was a surprise, a relief to be able to speak, to not be dead. Alice someone said, and it was David, beyond her closed eyes, holding her tired hands. Would you like to meet the murderer, David, she thought. I hear your voice asking to see him, so there's nothing for me but to point him out to you. David stood over her. She opened her eyes. The room came into focus. Moving a weak hand, she pulled aside a coverlet. The murderer looked up at David, Le at David Lieber with a small, red-faced, blue-eyed calm. Its eyes were deep and sparkling. Why, cried David Lieber, smiling, he's a fine baby. Dr. Jeffers was waiting for David Lieber the day he came to take his wife and new child home. He motioned Lieber to a chair in his office, gave him a cigar, lit one for himself, sat on the edge of his desk, puffing solemnly for a long moment. Then he cleared his throat, looked David Lieber straight, in, straight on and said, Your wife doesn't like her child, Dave. What? It's been a hard thing for her. She'll need a lot of love this next year. I didn't say much at the time, but she was hysterical in the delivery room. The strange things she said, I won't repeat them. All I'll say is that she feels alien to the child. Now, this may simply be a thing we can clear up with one or two questions. He sucked at his cigar another moment, then said, Is this child a wanted child, David? Why do you ask? It's vital. Yes, it's a wanted child. We planned it together. Alice was so happy a year ago when, mm, 
That makes it more difficult, because if the child was unplanned, it would be a simple case of the woman hating the idea of motherhood. That doesn't fit Alice. Dr. Jeffers took his cigar from his lips, rubbed his hand across his jaw. It must be something else, then. Perhaps something buried in her childhood that's coming out now. Or it might be the simple temporary doubt and distrust of any mother who's gone through the unusual pain and near death that Alice has. If so, then a little time should heal that. I thought I'd tell you, David. It'll help you be easy and tolerate with her, and tolerant with her if she says anything about, well, about wishing that the child had been born dead. And if things don't go well, the three of you drop in on me. I'm always glad to see old friends. Here, take another cigar along for, uh, for the baby. It was a bright spring afternoon. Their car hummed along wide, tree-lined boulevards. Blue sky, flowers, a warm wind. Dave talked a lot, lit his cigar, talked some more. Alice answered directly, softly, relaxing a bit more as the trip progressed. But she held the baby not tightly or warmly or motherly enough to satisfy the queer ache in Dave's mind. She seemed to be merely carrying a porcelain figurine. Well, he said at last, smiling, what'll we name him? Alice Labor watched the green trees slide by. Let's not decide yet. I'd rather wait until we got, until we get an exceptional name for him. Don't blow smoke in his face. Her sentences ran together with no change in tone. Her statement held no motherly reproof, no interest, no irritation. She just mouthed it, and it was said. The husband, disquieted, dropped the cigar from the window. Sorry, he said. The baby rested in the crook of his mother's arm, shadows of sun and tree changing his face. His blue eyes opened like fresh blue spring flowers. Moist noises came from his tiny pink elastic mouth. Alice gave her baby a quick glance. Her husband felt her shiver against him. Cold, he asked. A chill. Better raise the window, David. It was more than a chill. He rolled the window slowly up. Supper time. David had brought the child from the nursery, propped him at a tiny, bewildered angle, supported by many pillows, in a newly purchased high chair. Alice watched her knife and fork move. He's not high chair size, she said. Fun having him here anyway, said Dave, feeling fine. Everything's fun at the office, too. Orders up my nose. If I don't watch myself, I'll make another 15000 this year. Hey, look at Junior, will you? Drooling all down his chin, he reached over to wipe the baby's mouth with his napkin. From the corner of his eye, he realized that Alice wasn't even watching. He finished the job. I guess it wasn't very interesting, he said, backing at his food. But one would think a mother takes some interest in her own child. Alice jerked her chin up. Don't speak that way. Not in front of him. Later, if you must. Later, he cried, in front of and back of. What's the difference? He quieted suddenly, swallowed. He was sorry. All right. Okay, I know how it is. After dinner, she let him carry the baby upstairs. She didn't tell him to. She let him. Coming down, he found her standing by the radio, listening to music she didn't hear. Her eyes were closed, her whole attitude one of wondering self-questioning. She started when he appeared. Suddenly, she was at him, against him, soft, quick, the same. Her lips found him, kept him. He was stunned. Now that the baby was gone upstairs, out of the room, she began to breathe again, live again. She was free. She whispered rapidly, endlessly, Thank you, my darling. Thank you, darling, for being yourself, always dependable, so very dependable. He had to laugh. <laughs> my father told me, son, provide for your family. Wearily, she rested her dark, shining hair against his neck. You've overdone it. Sometimes I wish we were just the way we were when we were first married. No responsibilities, nothing for ourselves. No, no babies. She crushed his hand in hers, a supernatural whiteness in her face. Oh, Dave, once it was just you and me. We protected each other, and now we protect the baby. But get no protection from it. Do you understand? Lying in the hospital, I had time to think a lot of things. The world is evil. Is it? Yes, it is. But laws protect us from it. And when there aren't laws, when love does the protecting, you're protected from hurting you. You're protected my hurting. You're protected from my hurting you by my love. You're vulnerable to me of all people, but love shields you. 
I feel no fear of you because love cushions all your irritations, unnatural instincts, hatred, and immaturities. But what about the baby? It's too young to know love or law of love or anything until we teach it and in the meantime be vulnerable to it. Vulnerable to a baby? He held her away and laughed gently. <laughs> Does a baby know the difference between right and wrong? She asked. No, but it'll learn. But the baby is so new, so amoral, so conscious free. She stopped. Her arms dropped from him and she turned swiftly. That noise! What is it? Liebert looked around the room. I didn't hear. She stared at the library door. In there, she said slowly. Lieber crossed the room, opened the door, and switched the library lights on and off. Not a thing, he came back to her. You're worn out to bed with you right now. Turning out the lights together, they walked slowly up the soundless hall stairs, not speaking. At the top, she apologized. My wild talk, darling, forgive me, I'm exhausted. He understood and said so. She paused, undecided by the nursery door. Then she fingered the brass knob sharply, walked in. He watched her approach the crib, much too carefully look down and stiffen as if she was struck, she'd was she been struck in the face. David! Liber stepped forward, reached the crib. The baby's face was bright red and very moist. His small pink mouth opened and shut, opened and shut. His eyes were a fiery blue. His hands leapt about in the air. Oh, said, D said Dave. He, he's just been crying. Has he? Alice Labor seized the crib railing to balance herself. I didn't hear him. The door was closed. Is that why he breathes so hard, why his face is red? Sure. Poor little guy, crying all alone in the dark. He can sleep in our room tonight, just in case he cries. You'll spoil him, his wife said. Lieber felt her eyes follow as he rolled the crib into their bedroom. He undressed silently, sat on the edge of the bed. Suddenly, he lifted his head, swore under his breath, snapped his fingers. Damn it. Forgot to tell you, I must fly to Chicago Friday. Oh, David. Her voice was lost in the room. I put this trip off for two months, and now it's critical. I just have to go. I'm afraid to be alone. We'll have the new cook by Friday. She'll be here all the time. I'll only be gone a few days. I'm afraid I don't know of what. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I guess I'm crazy. He was in bed now. She darkened the room. He heard her walk around the bed, throw back the cover, slide in. He smelled the warm woman smell of her next to him. He said, Do you want me to wait a few days? Perhaps I could. No, she said, I'm convinced. You go. I know it's important. It's just that I keep thinking about what I told you. La laws and love and protection. Love protects me from you. You from me, but the baby. She took a breath. What protects you from him, David? Before he could answer, before he could tell her how silly it was, speaking of infants, she switched off the bed light abruptly. Look, she said, pointing. The baby lay wide awake in its crib, staring straight at him with deep, sharp blue eyes. The lights went out again. She trembled against him. It's not nice, being afraid of the thing you birthed. Her whisper lowered, became harsh, fierce, swift. He tried to kill me. He lies there, listens to us talking, waiting for you to go away so he can try to kill me again. I swear it, sobs broke from her. Please, he kept saying, soothing, soothing her. Stop it, stop it, please. She cried in the dark for a long time. Very late, she relaxed, shakingly against him. Her breathing came soft, warm, regular. Her body twitched its warm reflexes, and she slept. He drowsed. And just before her eyes lidded wearily down, sinking him into deeper, and just before his eyes lidded wearily down, sinking him deeper and yet deeper tides, he heard a strange little sound of awareness and awakened in the room, the sound of small, moist, pinkly elastic lips, the baby, and then sleep. And we will pause there.